Sometimes the memories overwhelm him, and he needs to go out and take a long walk. He calls himself Bana. He doesn't want to use his real name. He was a child soldier in Sierra Leone for seven years. Then he went into hiding. A year ago, he fled to Germany. The feeling is, is good, like I'm in heaven. So now I've started to feel like I'm a human being again, like I came again into a new planet. In 1992, Sierra Leone was a country in the throes of civil war. Rebel forces were supposedly fighting to overthrow the government and liberate the people. But the rebels developed a reputation for random cruelty. One day, they attacked Bana's village. He was 12 years old at the time. They killed my brother. They raped my sister. They killed my brother's wife and then with two sons. So they killed them. So my mother, they shoot my mother. So she was lying down on the blood. And then she said, you know what, in our own language, in Kono, and then he said that, join them. You have to join these people so that they will not kill you. The rebels abducted him, abused him, and gave him drugs. Before long, he too was killing innocent people. I feel good because I don't know what I'm doing at that time. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I, I, the only thing I know I will do because they command me. So go do this and then I'm ready to do it. So I do it and then I'll feel happy. It was not feeling like a power, it was a feeling like I'm on top of the world. Thousands of children suffered a similar fate. Axel van Maltitz is a psychotherapist who works at a center for victims of torture in Lindau. The children were all given drugs, he says. Many victims tell of atrocities such as cutting open people's stomachs. In Sierra Leone, hands were cut off and the boy soldiers would play with these hands, but only because they were on drugs. But when the drugs wore off, the boy soldiers had to deal with all the memories. They can't live with themselves. They can't believe what they've done. He and his team have treated hundreds of victims of war, torture, and persecution. The Exilio Center has been running for 15 years. It's financed by EU funds and private donations. The center's archives contain thousands of documents that attest to decades of systematic torture in countries all over the world. Recently, von Maltitz and his team have also treated patients from Syria. They're well aware that any demonstrators arrested these days during the ongoing anti-government protests will likely end up in torture cells operated by the dreaded Syrian secret police. Their first aim is to break their resistance, because normally the victim is a political insurgent or at least a perceived enemy. The second goal is to release them back into society as a zombie, a robot, so that everyone can see they've been broken and that it's not worth taking on the state, or they'll end up like that too. Bana is haunted by his experiences. His body has survived, he says, but his soul is still trapped in Sierra Leone. You people don't have these things here, but we have it back home. They said the blood is running after you. Or if you kill the innocent people, the blood is coming back. Like, for example, before I came here, there's a lot of people who have mad. The crazy, the mad, they walk on the street, talking to themselves, take their clothes off, they eat food from the dustbin. So, it's like their blood is running after them. What do you think? There's no medicine in the world that can make him feel better. All that helps is talking, what's called narrative therapy. It involves patients externalizing their problems. Many symptoms can be dealt with when patients accept that what happened belongs to the past. Where did she bring you? It took Mariam from Gambia a long time to be able to talk about what happened to her. She lost her parents when she was 12. Then a neighbor sold her to an old man. They tell me I will go sleep with the man. I say I will not do that one. They tied me, my, my hands and my leg 
forced me to sleep with the man. In subsequent years, she was held captive, tortured, and raped. She managed to go to the police at one point, but they refused to help. Even when I go police, they will say, you're supposed to marry. It's a transition. Mariam escaped in 2009 and applied for asylum in Germany. Every day brings her one step closer to coming to terms with her trauma. The memories remain. The images remain. Whenever they speak of these experiences, some of them come back to them. Bana has also applied for asylum in Germany. He says that if it's approved, he'd like to start a family here. Perhaps that will help him forget his terrible past. <laughs>